Welcome to today's webinar. For those of you who don't already know us, I'm Janet Waring, the CEO of Artform Agency, and I'm joined by our Director of Marketing and Advertising, Royce Harada. And then we also have uh, Savannah Howard, uh, who's part of our team, who's just going to help answer questions, let people in. Um, so welcome. Okay, we are going to jump right in. So um, I just wanted to start by looking at the components of a marketing strategy. Um, you still have to do all the work, but with generative AI, it can save you hours with each and every one of these components. So um, because we are going to be sending this slide deck later, I just went ahead and included some of the prompts that we use and that we would recommend using. Um, so for the executive summary, it's a high level overview of a marketing strategy and the executive summary should summarize everything that's in your marketing plan within one or two pages. So a prompt that you could use is just summarize this marketing plan into an executive summary and then copy and paste. And I say here a stripped down marketing plan because you don't wanna use any um, identifying information about yourself um, that you just wouldn't want out there in the ether. So, um, but you can drop that whole plan in there and ask it to summarize it as an executive summary and it'll produce wonderful things for you. Um, business objectives. Uh, a business objective is the goal set by your marketing team that benefits the overall business. So your business objectives should connect to the work that is outlined in the marketing strategy. Um, business objectives often shift annually, so it's important to notate that when you're drafting your marketing strategy. Um, again, here's a good prompt. So our marketing team has set these goals, insert your goals um, with these projected outcomes, put in the outcomes, and then to benefit our business in your industry and put in what your industry, and then ask chat GPT to write a paragraph connecting your goals and outcomes of your business to create business objectives for a marketing strategy. And it will generate that for you. Um, marketing goals and metrics. So while the business objectives highlight the overall company goals, this section will identify the specific goals that the marketing team is trying to achieve. So include in this any major KPIs or SMART goals that your team establishes, um, identify milestones, major deadlines in this section. So again, a prompt here would be, these are our marketing tactics and goals, and then insert them, and then ask it to create a table with a KPI, associated metrics, and milestones for each. Um, it will generate in a table. You can ask it to generate in a downloaded format, and it you know will create a CSV file for you. Um, yeah, you can just prompt it to just spit all this out for you. It's lovely. <laughs> so, um, marketing initiatives, any major marketing initiative you have will live in this section. And so this includes your team's positioning strategy, what marketing channels you're planning to use, how you're allocating your budget, your branding strategy, and your marketing funnel strategy. So you can see just in those things that I listed, there's still a lot of things that you have to generate yourself and think to yourself, but you can use a prompt saying to suggest marketing channels for each of these goals um, and insert what your goals are. Um, and it will, and you can ask it to be specific with brand names of channels and it, it will promote all of that for you. Um, the market research section. So this section details the current state of your external market for your industry. So this section includes your customer analysis, your competitive analysis, and your team SWOT analysis. So you might also find demographic information on your target market, your competitor battle cards, your comparison charts, your messaging documents, all of that would be in your market research section of your strategy. And you can use AI prompts to do a lot of that work for you. Um, which we are going to be digging into as we move on. So to start your strategy, there's two things that you should start with, and that is an audit of your digital presence and an audit of your current strategy. So um, auditing your digital presence, this is um, a step that a lot of people miss, but it's really crucial for several reasons. And one of them is that it's going to set your benchmarks from which to rise. So as your C-level is asking you um, how you did, if you don't start here with where you are, it's going to be hard to show how, how you're being effective with your marketing. So um, I just put some buckets together here. And again, we'll be sending you the slide deck, but for your Google Analytics, you're going to want to record what your top pages were, the behavior flow, how you're acquiring people, the performance, 
your site ranking. So what keywords are you currently ranking for? Um, your cert page, that stands for search engine result page. Like where are you on the results page? Are you showing up for any snippets? What's your domain authority? Um, your offsite digital presence, such your local listing. So is your Google listing optimized, your Bing listing, like um, and, you know, Google and Bing love their own products. So you really want to optimize your listings because it matters for search engines. Um, you want to do your competitor research. So you want to know how are your competitors performing? What keywords are they ranking for? That really helps you find gaps and opportunities. Um, for your SEO, you want to make, you know, look at your SEO analysis of your meta descriptions, your titles, your alt image tags, your canonicals. Do any of those need to be updated for 2024? You know, look at where they are now, include that in part of your strategy. Again, we can, I'll show you how you can use AI for that. You want to identify any crawl issues. You want to run a link checker um, to identify any broken links. You want to know your inbound and outbound links. That's really important for SEO. And there's lots of tools out there, Moz being one of them, that will let you know who's linking to you and who you're linking out to so that you can put that as part of your strategy. Your website performance, um, so your information architecture, your UX, your conversion rate optimizations, these are all things that you want to look at and as you audit your presence. And then, of course, your social media, your reach, your engagement, your sentiment analysis. Okay, um, we did a webinar on SEO. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into SEO because that webinar really covers a lot of it. And Savannah, if you want to drop our YouTube channel in there in our chat for anybody who would like to go see that. But you can put your URL directly into ChatGPT or BARD. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do that. They say not to put your URL identifying information in. But the thing is, ChatGPT and BARD are connected to the internet already. So they already have your URL. So if you want to drop a URL in and ask these questions, there's really not a lot of risk. So here's a prompt um, that you can ask, you know, is this page properly optimized for the search term? And then insert the term that you're trying to optimize that page for. And then ask, does it include enough semantic variations? And if not, please suggest changes and put those changes in bold. So that way it's easy to read, it's easy to see. And you can use this on any of your pages and your content, the things that you're putting out there, and it will analyze it for you. It saves a lot of time. Okay, the next step is you want to begin by cataloging the marketing channels and strategies that are driving results versus those that aren't delivering. So for any channel that's not showing promise or a positive ROI, consider pausing your investment in them. Um, place these underperforming channels on a probation list for further evaluation. If their poor performance is due to a mismatch in creative approach, this can be revisited and potentially reintegrated into your marketing efforts later on. Um, however, it's crucial to cease funding any initiatives that aren't clearly yearly yielding um, returns as soon as you spot them. And then you want to investigate the root issue as to why those are not channels are not working. Okay. Um, so making a list and checking it twice. Um, so basically everything that Janet had previously talked about as far as um, you know, really auditing your online presence kind of culminates into this analogy here. So I'm going to try to paint a picture. Um, imagine that you're gardening and have a network of hoses watering your plants. Um, if you notice that one section of your garden isn't thriving, you'd first check if the hoses are functioning properly in that area. And if you find a hose that's punctured and leaking water into the path instead of your plants, you wouldn't just keep the water running, obviously. Um, so you turn off that specific valve to stop wasting water and then proceed to either repair or replace the faulty hose. Um, and only by stopping the water flow can you address the issue without incurring unnecessary water loss. So um, with that being said, obviously that sounds really foundational, but that's basically the point, the preliminary foundational step of your strategy. And um, even to take a step back, these two images were AI generated by Dolly. And we basically prompted and asked, what's the best way to visualize this metaphor? And this is what it gave us. So fun little plug there. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is look at your data. So um, how often did you look at your data this year? 
and what insights did you gain? Um, did you have the right KPIs and metrics? I think that is one of the things that we find most often in working with clients is that people do not align their KPIs and metrics. Like, so for example, we'll have people that say, you know, I want to reach, you know, 10,000 people. I want to do an awareness campaign. So we'll run an awareness campaign. We'll reach over 10,000 people and we're reporting on the metrics. And then they'll come back and say, how come I didn't get any leads? And I'll say, well, because it was an awareness campaign, not a lead gen campaign. So it's really important to align the metrics because the metrics for a lead gen campaign would be form fills. The metrics for an awareness campaign would be impressions. So make sure that you are aligning those two goals correctly and that um, your team understands that. So whoever you're reporting back on, that they understand that. And so... Um, Oh, sorry. And I just wanted to mention that you clearly define those as well mm -hmm. in writing. So everyone, like Janet was saying, is completely aligned on these um, measurements of success. Yeah. And this is where we a lot of times end up, you know, as marketers, you know, you're educating your sales team and your C-level of, of this alignment. Because like I said, often people are asking for something and they don't realize what they really want. So um, data and insights are what your business needs to grow. So there's a lot of free analytics tools out there like Google Analytics. And now um, with AI, it can analyze, analyze all that data for you. So um, really important to do, use the analytics. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and we also wanted to add some prompts that you can use for analytics insights. So once again, you can plug these into a generative AI tool like ChatGPT or Bard. Um, and, you know, in our previous webinar, we walked through a use case of ChatGPT's data analysis function, where we were able to upload a report and ask it for specific insights and recommendations um, based on that data. Uh, so here are a few prompts that can be paired with that function. So I'll just quickly read through these. You can upload a report and say, based on this spreadsheet, which channels are most effective for our type of marketing campaign? And for this, insert your target audience. That way it kind of understands what, um, which data points to parse and what is most effective or important to you. Um, there's also list 10 insights from our existing marketing analytics data to inform future type of marketing campaign decisions that can help you with just uh, forecasting and content creation. And then using predictive analytics to measure the impact of our type of marketing on customer behavior. So once again, just um, that foresight, um, more psychographic um, data parsing, analytics parsing, um, and it should save you some time by being able to upload your reports and have generative AI sift through all the data for you. Okay. Next thing in your strategy that you're going to want to do is to note what did and did not get implemented and then note why, because we all know that this is real. Every year you've got all these great things that you want to implement, you want to do, but some things fall off and don't happen. So put pen to paper and really take stock of what really happened. Why did some things not get implemented? Um, and then um, of equal importance, note why. So then armed with that data of what worked and what didn't work, was there anything that you plan to implement in 2023 that just didn't happen? And is it something that you can implement in 2024 and use an AI tool to bring it over the finish line? Um, so, okay, this slide I added this morning because I am such a data geek, but <laughs> Um, OpenAI held its first ever OpenAI Dev Day, which was just amazing. If you look at this quote here from Sam Altman about what we launched today is going to look, ve look very quaint relative to what we're creating for you now. So it is just amazing to see what's coming. Um, but there's more than 2 million developers building solutions through um, ChatGPT's OpenAI. So most of what we currently use and see is people just wrapping code code around um, the open AI to make SaaS products um, and apps, but you really don't need those SaaS products and apps right now if you know how to use ChatGPT correctly and you understand how to prompt it correctly. Um, so this is all going to change in 2024 because I think we're going to see some major changes. Um, OpenAI is launching a platform creating and for creating and discovering um, 
versions of chat GPT. So basically it's letting anyone create their own version of chat GPT. So if you have the paid version, you'll see that now that it'll say my chat GPT and you can create your own. Um, OpenAI is launching a GPT store later this month. So there's natural parallels to be drawn between OpenAI's GPT store and what we saw with Apple's debut of the App Store in 2008. So um, like Apple back then, OpenAI is inviting developers who are excited about this technology to create new um, chat GPTs. And I think it's just going to explode in 2024. Um, some other notable highlights that happened on this dev day is their um, OpenAI's copyright shield. So they're defending customers from legal action. They announced um, chat GPT for turbocharge. It's supposed to be faster and cheaper. And then chat GPT, um, they were just noted, it's continuing to be the fastest growing service ever. So breaking news from what's going on in chat GPT. Okay, so let's look at some of these AI technologies in marketing. So machine learning algorithms that analyze consumer behavior enable predictive analysis and customer segmentation. The natural lang language processing that's used um, is used for con content creation, sentiment analysis, and customer service um, automations. Um, the um, customer relationship management systems can utilize AI to provide sales forecasting and personalized communication. Um, there's data analytics and predictive modeling that we're going to get into a little deeper dive further in the webinar. But um, with AI now connected to the internet, you can ask AI to recommend by name the best tools based on your audience, your budget, your goals. You just tell it what you're looking for, what you're working with, who you're trying to reach, and it can give you help you write your strategies. So ChatGPT is connected now with Bing. Bard, of course, is connected to Google, and Microsoft has now has their co-pilot for PC users. Um, Another new technologies that just came in this week. Um, I just blows my mind when I opened up um, my chat GPT. So now that Dolly, the data analytics and chat GPT classic, those top three are what we're going to use in marketing. But look at some of this other stuff. There's a laundry buddy. Hello. A sous chef. A, a uh, mocktail mixologist. I mean, there's just everything on here now. So have fun with it, but definitely concentrate on the top three for your marketing. And I did read something actually where people are using um, generative AI for specialty diet. Um, oh, yeah. Me uh, not menus, but um, recipes and such. So it... I used it for an itinerary for travel. When we were going to Nashville, I asked it to break out my itinerary and travel stops. It was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> not not marketing. So I digress, but it was really still very cool. All right, we're just trying to take this um, AI trends in marketing. Sure. So um, current AI trends in marketing. So a lot of these won't seem so new, but it's propelling so quickly and evolving so quickly that it's worth mentioning, um, re-mentioning most of these. So um, first, chatbots and virtual assistants. So, uh, you know, AI chatbots are really enhancing customer service and lead qualification. Um, so they're not new but their capabilities are skyrocketing. So for example, Starbucks, they have an AI chatbot that really exemplifies this trend. Um, basically, it's just really predictive based on you know um, what you have previously ordered, obviously, but when you ask it for recommendations and such, it will tailor a drink to you because you know that you can customize Starbucks any which way. Um, there's personalized engines. So AI-driven personalization is really transforming uh, website interactions. So email marketing and product recommendations, all of this is tailored content to user behavior and preferences. Um, and it just keeps learning as you uh, your users begin to interact more and more. Uh, there's content optimization. Um, so AI tools are refining content for SEO, for readability and for engagement. Um, they're essential for keyword research, page analysis, and creating meta tags. And this really also helps with ADA compliance at the end um, of the day as well. There's predictive analytics, where um, AI's predictive capabilities are advancing decision-making. Um, 
by using extensive data to anticipate user behavior. Um, it optimizes ads and offers as well. There is AI in video production. Uh, so AI is really cutting costs and time in video production. So this is supporting with script writing, not taking away you know, that job per se, but supporting um, editing and creating short form content from long videos. We have audience segmentation. So AI's deep analysis um, provides detailed insights into customer profiles. And this enhances both quantitative and qualitative marketing strategies. And then we have um, AI, AR, and VR integration. So this is, I think, the most uh, forward propelling one where the converg convergence of AI with augmented and virtual reality is crafting immersive brand experiences. So we're already seeing this with giants like um, Snapchat and Nike, and we actually do have an example on the next slide. Um, and of course, voice search optimization. So uh, AI is really propelling voice search to deliver personalized, user-friendly experiences, um, setting new standards in brand engagement and customer convenience. So uh, one of these current use cases for AI trends in marketing, um, so here's an example. Uh, most of us as marketers do not have the budget of a Sephora. But I thought this was a really cool example of how AI in VR is being used. So Sephora has integrated AI with AR and VR to create a virtual try-on experience for customers. Uh, so their virtual try-on feature uses an avatar that can mimic a customer's facial expressions and skin tone. And basically, this allows them to see how makeup or skincare products would look on their own face, I guess, makeup. So this is a tech forward and very interactive sales tool and just another example of how AI is quickly entering our everyday lives. All right, um, we also wanna revisit this campaign funnel that we discussed in our practical applications in marketing webinar. So I think that Savannah had dropped this in the chat for everyone. Um, so we'll just quickly revisit this and talk about ways that AI can be integrated into each level of this customer journey funnel. Uh, so starting at the top, we have, of course, the awareness phase. Um, in this awareness stage of the customer journey, the goal is to really capture the attention of potential customers and just really make them aware of your product or service. Um, so really just that brand awareness. But this is where AI can step in as a game changer now. Um, where AI-powered content creation platforms can generate engaging blog post outlines um, and ideas, um, social media updates, and even video content tailored to your audience's interests and search habits. Um, and even to back up there, you know, obviously you need to know who your audience is before you can even begin this journey. So it's not just a one-stop shop where you, you know, AI can generate your audience for you. You really need to understand your audience to begin this. Uh, moving on to the consideration stage or the education and consideration stage. Um, at this point, prospective customers are evaluating their options. Um, and this is where AI provides a really competitive edge. Uh, predictive analytics comes into play here by using machine learning to analyze large amounts of data on customer behavior. Um, AI models can score leads based on how likely they are to convert. And this just really frees up your marketing sales team and allows them to focus their efforts on the most promising prospects. So who's most likely to actually become a customer or convert? And then finally, we arrive at the decision stage. Um, so this is really the critical moment when a potential customer decides whether or not to purchase your product or service. Uh, so by analyzing user behavior data, AI algorithms can suggest personalized changes to your UX or UI to simplify the, to simplify, sorry, the purchasing process. So really just looking at user behavior um, on your website, through your sales tools, and just seeing where there are those drop-offs, um, where and how on your website users are most likely to, um, to take um, those next actions to convert or to make that final decision and just really give us recommendations to simplify that process. So needless to say, um, you know, each phase of the customer journey is an opportunity to apply AI for more precise, 
efficient and effective marketing strategies. And part of your strategy will be your campaign calendar. Um, so once again, in our previous uh, webinar, we discussed a typical marketing campaign process and applied generative AI at each step. So this slide is, um, yeah, we took a deeper dive into these five processes in our uh, previous webinar. So I don't want to dwell on this too long. However, this is just another way of looking at the customer journey or the conversion funnel. Uh, so starting at the top, you know, we have the, um, starting at the top, we have the top of the funnel content. We have the middle of the funnel where we have our lead magnets and landing page um, generation. And then the bottom of, bottom of the funnel where we have our thank you page. Basically, this is when we have reached that conversion, but we don't want to stop there. We want to have a post-conversion user experience to just keep our customers engaged and just keep them interacting um, with our brand and just keep giving them value. Um, and of course, really important is our analytics. We need to you know, make sure that our efforts are working. And of course, this gives us the opportunity to see what is working, what isn't working, and just give us really data-driven insights and recommendations um, or rooms for improvement. Great. So um, whether you're a large or small business, you're going to get left behind if you don't start integrating AI. But I know that's a lot easier said than done. So this, I'm reminded of the internet years ago. I know I'm dating myself, but when that came out and everybody had questions and didn't know where it was going to go, and the early adopters are the ones that were winning. So really, I encourage you guys to figure out how to integrate Um AI into your business, but it's important to start wisely and with a plan. So one of the things that we did was we created a um, checklist. Um, Savannah, if you don't mind dropping that into the chat, you guys can download this checklist that we have. Um, <clears throat> basically, we're talking about the leadership buy-in. So you want to evaluate the level of support from top management for integrating AI into the marketing strategy. Um, successful AI adoption requires an understanding and commitment from your leadership team. And then your change management. So you want to assess the organization's readiness to manage the change that comes with AI adoption, including the potential need for restructuring teams, processes, and workflows. The skills and expertise. So determine whether your team has the necessary skills to work with AI or if there's a need to hire new talent or provide training or partner with external experts. Plug for art form there. Um, cultural innovation, measure the organization's openness to innovation and experimentation, as AI initiatives often require a culture that is not risk averse and willing to embrace new technologies. Um, strategic alignment, ensure that AI initiatives align with the broader business goals of marketing objectives and are not just a pursuit of the latest technology for its own sake. And I realize as marketers, that's going to be a hard sell. That's going to be on you all to be able to show how AI aligns with broader business goals, but you can use AI to help with that. Technical considerations. So the data infrastructure, evaluate the current set, I'm sorry, the current state of data infrastructure to determine if you can support AI technologies, including data collection, storage, and processing capabilities. Uh, data quality and availability. So assess the quality, quantity, and variety of data available as AI systems can require large, clean, and diverse data sets to function effectively. Um, and then technology stack assessment. So review the existing marketing technology stack to identify potential integration points for AI tools um, in the need for new investments. And then, of course, compliance and security ensure the use of AI in marketing com complies with relevant data protection regulations like GDPR, CCPA, and assess the organization's capacity to secure AI systems against potential breaches. And we are going to get into this a little bit further in the webinar um, on how to do that. And then scalability is super important because like I said, I think this is just going to continue to explode, you know, even day by day. So consider um, if the current technical infrastructure is scalable and flexible enough to grow as AI applications expand and evolve. So again, knowing as marketers that you are going to be the ones to have to convince your leadership to invest in AI, 
Uh, I just did some questions here that I thought would be helpful that you can ask yourself um, as you're making that argument for AI. So when aligning business goals with AI initiatives, it's crucial to ask the right questions. Um, so how does AI support your core business objectives? So examine how AI initiatives can directly contribute to the key goals of your business, such as increasing efficiency, increasing revenue, improving customer satisfaction, generating leads, driving sales. Um, what specific problems or opportunities are you aiming to address with AI? So identify the particular challenges of market opportunities that AI can help you tackle. So this ensures that AI efforts are focused and relevant. Um, and are your data management capabilities sufficient to support AI? So consider whether you have the necessary data infrastructure. Um, and then what measurable outcomes will indicate the success of your AI initiative? So define clear, quantifiable metrics that will allow you to evaluate the success of your AI projects. And again, we'll get into this a little bit further in the webinar, but this can include metrics like the return on investment, customer engagement levels, or process efficiencies. Um, how will AI integrate integration affect the organization culture and workforce? So um, reflect on the potential impact of AI on your employees and your company culture, and then consider what changes may be required in terms of skills development, job roles, and acceptance of AI as a tool to assist rather than to replace the workforce. All right, now we're going to talk about um, choosing tools. So when you're choosing the tools, um, consider the following factors. So integration with existing systems, ensure that the AI tools can seamlessly integrate with your current tech stack. Um, look at the ease of use. So look at user-friendly interfaces that don't require advanced technical skills to operate. Uh, scalability, choose tools that can scale with your business needs as you grow. Support and training, consider the level of customer support and training that resources have available to help your team get the most out of the AI tool. And that's where reviews can be really important to look at the scalability and the customer support, because often if customer support is horrible, it'll say it in the reviews, so read those reviews. Um, remember that the goal of starting small is to implement AI in a way that delivers immediate value and allows your team to become comfortable with these new technologies. So once you have initial successes, you can build upon them, experimenting with more complex AI applications as your confidence grows. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some specific tools. So Chatbot, um, there are tools like Intercom, Drift, and ChatFuel that allow the creation of conversational bots that can easily integrate with your website and social media platforms. So email marketing, there's platforms like MailChimp and Constant Contact that have AI features that are they're just adding to constantly that can help you optimize your email marketing efforts from subject line suggestions to the best sending times. Um, content creation um, is, I think, just using ChatGPT. BT Straight and Bard, but there's also tools like Copy AI and Write Sonic that will assist with generating marketing copy. Um, and these can be significant time savers. The analytics and insight platforms, Google Analytics um, with AI and predictive capabilities can um, provide valuable insight into customer behavior, especially paired with tools like Tableau and Microsoft Power BI that can help you visualize and interpret the data. And then of course, your CRM, your customer relationship management systems are being powered by AI more and more like Salesforce and HubSpot. They have AI that offers advanced analytics, lead scoring, customer journey, journey mapping. And again, they're adding to these daily. Okay, here's another new thing on ChatGPT that I added this slide this morning because I think it's so cool. So um, ChatGPT has plugin store now that offers an array of third-party plugins from reputable brands like Expedia, Instacart, Kayak, Zapier. Um, and I think as brands find new ways to attract customers, we're going to see a lot more SaaS brands on these plugins list. Um, but if you can just look at the sample that I've included here, I mean, think about how helpful these are. Um, ask your PDF, diagramming, coder, and the is just all so cool. Um, so what OpenAI had to say about a plugins on the plugins on their website is that language models today, while useful for a variety of tasks, are still limited. So the only information they can learn from is training data. And this information can be out of date and is a one size fits all across applications. 
Um, so though not perfect, plugins can be the eyes and ears for language models, giving them access to information that is more recent, personal, and specific to include training the data. So plugins enable language models to perform safe, constrained actions on their behalf, increasing the usefulness of the systems. So I think this is really cool. And I think we're going to see a lot, a lot more plugins. So visit the plugin store. Be really cool. Okay. So now we're going to talk about scaling up. So once you've gotten into the basics and you want to scale up, um, your ability in your organization, it's going to involve a very strategic approach for in-house training, um, augmenting your team with new hires, forming partnerships, um, invest in training current employees on AI and data literacy. Many online platforms offer courses in AI fundamentals and machine learning. So um, some of them are Coursera, um, Udemy, edX, um, Google AI education, Microsoft education, they all, they both have AI schools, um, attend workshops and webinars like what we're doing. Um, and Savannah, if you want to drop the link to our AI newsletter so that people know that we'll be just be updating on what's going on in the world of AI as it relates to marketing. Um, so yeah, let's, let me see AI specialist. I don't know. I think we covered a lot of this in another slide, so. Okay. So assess your needs and gaps. Regularly assess your organization's AI needs and the skill gaps to determine the areas where training is necessary or hiring is necessary. Um, and emphasize ethics and responsibility. So one of the things I really recommend that you do as a company is have a public facing AI policy as well as an internal AI policy for your employees. Um, and if anybody wants to see what we've done as a company, shoot me an email and I'll send you our documents and um, how we're doing it. Um, but you also want to foster a data-driven culture. So you want to encourage decision-making based on data and insights derived from AI. Um, it can help demonstrate the value of scaling the AI capabilities. And then, of course, measuring the return on investment. Um, it will guide you in where to invest in scaling your AI efforts, you know, based on what's working, what's not working. Royce, you want to take this one? Yes. So uh, measuring success, KPIs, and analytics. So as far as, as measuring the success of your AI initiatives go, uh, we can continue to apply our standard marketing KPIs, obviously with an AI uh, measurement twist. Uh, before we even get into these, though, it's really important to define these metrics ahead of time um, and just really align with your team so that there are no surprises at the very end when you're um, digging into the data. So uh, measuring success. So a few of these KPIs um, could include, you know, obviously conversion rates. For example, you can track the increase or decrease of conversion rates from campaigns that use AI for personalization and targeting. Uh, we have customer engagement, you know, once again, nothing new, but you can measure engagement metrics such as the time spent on the site, pages visited, and interactions with chatbots or virtual assistants, and just um, how well people perceive that or what they, you can do a, a survey, for example. Um, there's lead generation and quality, where we can monitor the number of leads generated through AI-powered tools and assess the quality and conversion potential of these leads. So um, big emphasis on the quality of the leads because, you know, Right now, at least, um, it's up to us as marketers and whoever is owning out these campaigns to really assess the effectiveness of the campaign based on qualified leads. Um, but then, of course, there's lead scoring. So there are different generative AI tactics as well. Uh, there's customer retention, where you can use AI to predict customer churn and measure the effectiveness of retention strategies. Uh, we have revenue growth, of course. Uh, you can assess the revenue attributable to AI initiatives, um, considering factors like increased average order value from personalized recommendations and such. And finally, sentiment analysis. Um, so you can use sentiment analysis to gauge brand perception and the impact of AI marketing campaigns on overall customer engagement. Um, so tools for measuring AI driven marketing success. So you can think of this as a small um, checklist. 
but as I had mentioned in the previous slide, it's really critical to leverage analytics. Um, a few things to consider when measuring AI-driven success includes establishing a really robust and specific baseline. Uh, this foundational step really allows us to measure our AI-driven progress with precision and clarity, um, especially when comparing, obviously, our current versus past data, historical data. And uh, by comparing this new performance data against these baselines, we can really quantify um, our advancements and identify areas of improvement and success. Um, so to ensure that our progress is in step with our goals, we align our KPIs directly with our overarching business goals. Of course, this alignment guarantees that our achievements in AI are not only statistical, um, or I'm sorry, not just statistical, but they're also strategic. Um, but also remember that the landscape of AI and marketing is ever and quickly evolving. So using dashboards for real-time analytics is really essential. And Janet had alluded to a couple of tools. For example, Tableau has a really great um, predictive analytics dashboard that's coming out in, I think, spring 2024. Um, basically, they just enable us to pivot and adjust our strategies very, very quickly in real time. Um, and this just keeps us agile and informed because user behavior is not the most predictable at the end of the day, um, but data can give us some informed decision-making tools. And looking ahead is really just as important as looking at the present and our current tactics. Um, once again, with predictive analytics, we can forecast future trends and behaviors. And this gives us the ability to make data-driven decisions that keep us ahead of the curve. Um, and, you know, really in this iterative journey of AI driven marketing, testing and refining our approaches is key, um, with or without AI really, but so regular AB testing and data analysis, um, inform our decisions and allowing, allow us to continually hone our methods for better results. So that's just one way that we, um, really, we call it garden, um, our advertising and marketing tactics here at Upform. And lastly, um, understanding the why behind AI decisions is critical. Uh, this transparency helps us interpret data more effectively and ensures that our use of AI remains both ethical and efficient. So we have here um, a few sample KPIs and metrics. These are just different ways maybe to inspire you or get you thinking about um, sorts of AI-driven KPIs that you can use once you do begin to implement these in your strategies. Um, so first we have, um, for example, AI-enhanced lead scoring accuracy. This could be measured by the effectiveness of AI in prioritizing leads in your CRM. So an example metric here could be the percentage increase in conversions from AI-scored high-priority leads. Um, so letting AI really predict who's most likely to convert and scoring them um, appropriately. And obviously, like I said in the previous slide, you know, giving um, these high prospects um, or high likely prospects to your sales team. Um, user engagement with AI features. So you can track how users interact with AI driven tools such as chatbots or personalized content recommendations. Yeah, and Bryce, can I just interrupt real quick? Because so like for the AI enhanced lead scoring, I think this is where all those baseline numbers come in because you really want to compare how were things working before you integrated the AI mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, those metrics are, your, it's a compare and contrast as you're doing reporting on it. Exactly. No, that's a great point. Um, yeah, we have cost efficiency in marketing operations where you can access the impact of, um, AI and reducing the cost of marketing operations. This includes automated content creation or ad bidding processes, um, compliance and risk mitigation. This is an interesting one where you, uh, given the importance of compliance in government related sectors, you can measure the role of AI in maintaining adherence to regulations in marketing practices. So that's a really important one coming up as well. And then finally, we have customer satisfaction and support where you can evaluate customer satisfaction levels in interactions with AI powered support services such as your chatbots or automated help desks. Um, so with that being said, you can use tools such as ChatGPT's data analysis function to parse your data 
create comprehensive insights and recommendations for all of these metrics or whichever metrics you um, you land on. Okay, so this slide I did because I was really interested in the AI predictive analysis process and trying to understand it because um, I just think it's really cool. So um, it just helps my brain when I can understand how things work and then I know how to apply it. So just wanted to share this with you guys. So the way this works um, is the data is collected. And so it's gathering large amounts of historical data on the consumer behavior. And then this data can include past purchases, online browsing habits, social media interactions, responses to your marketing campaigns, your email campaigns, and it takes all that data and it cleans it and organize it. And then the AI systems are trained to identify and handle the missing values, remove the duplicates, correct the errors to ensure the quality of the data um, that's being used for the analysis. And then this is when we move into pattern recognition. So the mas machine learning algorithm, which is a core part of AI, analyzes the prepared data to identify the patterns and correlations. For example, it might find that a consumer who buys a product often also buys um, another product. So um, there's an instant uptick in certain products or purchases at specific times of year. And then we move into model building. So AI uses the identified patterns to create predictive models. These models are essentially sets of rules and behaviors that the AI expects to see based on historical data. For instance, the model might predict that a consumer who has looked at several products pages on a website is likely to make a purchase soon. Oh, I'm realizing Oh, my glasses on. Much better. Okay, validation and learning. The predictive models are tested against a set of data not used in training to see how well they can predict behavior. The AI system learns from any mistakes and adjusts the models to improve accuracy. And then we move into forecasting. So once it's validated, the AI models can be used to predict future behaviors. The AI can forecast the customers that are most likely to buy and when they might buy and what marketing strategies were effective in bringing them to that decision. And then it has actionable insights. So these predictions are then translated into actionable insights and marketers can use them to target consumers with personalized recommendations, timed email campaigns, and special offers that align with these predictive behaviors. Um, and then it's continuous learning. As more data becomes available, the AI systems continue to learn and refine their prediction. So this ensures that models stay current with changing consumer behaviors and preferences. So by leveraging AI in this way, companies can anticipate their customers' needs, tailor the marketing efforts, um, allocate resources, and enhance the effectiveness of their marketing strategies. So that might be in the weeds for some people, but I think it's really great to know and understand how all of this is working behind the scenes um, so that then you can apply it. Um, Royce, you wanna take the ethical and compliance considerations? Absolutely, so uh, this is really important, ethical and compliance considerations. As AI technology uh, becomes increasingly integrated into marketing strategies every day, it's uh, really important for marketers to uh, prioritize ethical and compliant practices to ensure that uh, we uphold customer privacy, data protection, and fair and unbiased decision making. Um, so here are just a few considerations to keep in mind. These are some of the um, compliance and um, just privacy, data privacy compliant considerations here. And I will say that once we do send these over, there are a couple of links to uh, BBB national programs where they can get a little more in depth with these um, compliance standards and laws. So, and one more thing I'll preface is by saying that this is more applicable toward AI tool developers. Um, however, it's up to us as marketers to vet and research these tools to ensure that we're also by proxy compliant in these practices. Um, so first we can quickly go through GDPR compliance. Um, so basically we need to align our practices with its stringent guideline. Um, this basically entails transparency with customers, minimizing the data that's collected. So only the most necessary data and processing data on um, legitimate grounds. Then um, a newer one is the CCPA compliance. So this provides a framework for us to honor the privacy rights of California residents. 
Uh, this includes attention to these residents' rights to access, delete, or opt out of the use of their personal data at any time. Um, and finally, regulatory awareness doesn't stop at our borders. Um, staying abreast of and compliant with the data protection and laws in every jurisdiction, both um, in our country and abroad, um, is also really important. And as you can see here on this slide, many countries are adopting their own data privacy and protection laws. Um, and these are going to continue to grow and expand each year with the quick advancement of technology and data transfer capabilities. And AI, generative AI, plays a huge role in that now. All right, and continuing on the topic of ethical and compliance considerations when we talk about AI and marketing. Um, so it's really crucial to start with the foundation of ethics. From the outset, your AI strategy should be designed with these principles in mind. Uh, so without getting too in the weeds and sounding like an ethics 101 soundboard, um, this basically means ensuring transparency, fairness, and accountability in your campaigns. Um, so with that being said, AI should be used as a tool, not as a replacement for human judgment. Um, so another point here is continuous vigilance is key. It's really important to regularly monitor your AI solutions to identify any biases and ensure the accuracy and fairness of the outcomes. This includes staying informed about the evolving compliance landscape to ensure your marketing efforts remain within legal boundaries. Uh, moreover, ethical AI isn't a one-time effort. It's a continuous process that involves open communication. And by engaging with stakeholders, with your team, um, this just really fosters a dialogue about the use of AI and can create an environment of trust and cooperation. So once again, that transparency is key. Okay, and this slide is just a checklist kind of summarizing everything that we just went over. So I just wanted it to be a part of the deck when you got it, but I'm not going to read this to you. Um, but I want to thank you guys for your time and joining us today and um, really excited about everything that we're learning and what AI is doing and, you know, love sharing it. So um, please send us an email if you have any questions. Um, like I said, other webinars that we did are out on our YouTube channel and we would love to stay connected.